this helps us um, keep an idea of who's coming in. It also helps the, um, the national 1 million cups uh, keep an eye on our chapter and keep us top of mind. Um, if, the, if the app for some reason doesn't work, just delete it and re put it back on your phone and it should work. Leslie, did we lose you? It looks like so. Why don't we go ahead and um, so for one? Oh, here she comes. Here she comes. All right, guys, sorry, I'm back. I was trying to get one of the little pop-ups for the recording to go away and apparently I X'd out the whole meeting. I apologize, I am suffering with allergies and a toddler induced cold. So my brain isn't working at full steam this morning. But back to One Million Cups, we are a, um, a volunteer led organization that runs on entrepreneurship, community and education for everybody. Um, our mission is the um, mission of One Million Cups National, which is to lower the barrier of access to education, resources, and, and connection to all types of new and aspiring entrepreneurs throughout the United States. Next slide, please. Our key pillars are presentations, not pitches. That means um, we, we are looking for you to tell us about yourself, but not necessarily ask for sales or money. Um, we're looking for authentic connections, not networking. What does that mean? We want to become friends, friends refer friends. Uh, we are run for the community by the community. Um, we are a safe and supportive environment. We are co-owned by who will all show up and support us. So you being here, you are now a co-owner of One Million Cups. One Million Cups, as I said, is a volunteer-led um, organization. Uh, we have a multi multitude of organizers as well as brand ambassadors. And we, are, next slide, please. And uh, we've invite you to um, share us with your community and follow our community and via email, Facebook, so all social medias, um, and share us with your friends and family as well, whoever you think would benefit. Um, if you want to capture this screen, it has all of our various um, social media platforms that we're on, where you can find us and share the message of One Million Cups. Um, we currently have seven organizers. I believe I heard that we are looking for nine organizers. So if you have anybody in mind or if you want to step up to be an organizer, it is about an hour to an hour and a half commitment every week or um, every, yeah, weekly um, and a great group of high energy folks. Next slide, please. I don't know what happened to Tess on the slide. I used the wrong slide. Tess is also. Oh, oh, that's right. Tess, Tess Rollins joined us last yes, week. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we have eight organizers and six brand ambassadors. The brand ambassadors work to bring in new speakers, like our speaker this week, John Partridge. Um, and they are a wonderful group of folks too. Next slide, please. All right, our sponsors are, is John Yu on the call? Does he wanna talk about Office Evolutions? Yeah, thanks Leslie. Um, every month uh, we have uh, sponsors who help sort of fuel our meetings. Uh, when we meet in person, we have a space sponsor and a coffee sponsor, but uh, while we're still meeting in virtually, we're meeting virtually, we still want to recognize uh, 
um, two sponsors. So, so first one is Office Evolution. Uh, Office Evolution is a co-working space in Tyson's Corner. And uh, we provide a number of virtual and private office for a flexible, um, people are looking for a flexible option, uh, meeting room space and whatnot. Um, a second sponsor is a coffee sponsor. Uh, we want to uh, recognize uh, any company who wants to be a coffee sponsor. Now, um, since we're meeting in person, normally you would, uh, we're not meeting in person, but normally you would provide a, a five pounds of coffee every month. And then in return, you get a chance to talk about your business. But while we're meeting virtually, uh, you do not have to provide coffee, but we still want to recognize you. So if you would like to um, um, uh, uh, be a coffee sponsor and uh, tell us about your business for a couple of minutes uh, during the meeting. Uh, this is a great way to get, uh, uh, let us know your business and uh, uh, without costing you anything. So if you are interested in being a coffee sponsor for uh, upcoming month, please reach out to me. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie. No problem. All right, so how our virtual meetings work? Um, please keep your video on, but your microphone's muted. This is just um, a little bit of housekeeping to help keep the meetings nice and um, distraction free. So um, after, after John talks and does his presentation, we'll open it up for Q&A. So there's a little emoji down at the bottom of your screen. It's like a hand waving emoji. That is how you will raise your hand to ask John a question. Um, when the moderator says your name, please unmute your microphone, ask, say your name, who you're with, and then ask your question. And then when you're done, put your, put your um, microphone back on mute just for the next person. Um, next slide, please. All right. I am honored to present um, John Partridge of Honeydew Today. All right. Take it away, John. Thank you, Leslie. And, and, and uh, good morning, One Million Cups. It is wonderful to be back. And I'm very grateful to see uh, all the organizers and particularly as we get started, uh, grateful to Melinda for putting up with my uh, uh, PowerPoint phobia and, and holding my hand and getting me through it. I appreciate it and very grateful for it. Um, I'm the president and founder of Honeydew Today, uh, and, and we have a big goal at our company. Uh, you know, there once was a guy who was a mayor of Chicago at the turn of the century back in 1898, and he brought the World's Fair to Chicago. And he made a comment that always resonated with me. He said, you know, make no small plans, for they have no magic to stir men's blood. And I kind of take that with Honeydew today as, as I started it out from an idea. And we have a big goal to be America's handyman. Uh, and, and that's the big goal, but how do we get there? And, and we do that generally by answering the question, do you know a handyman? Uh, it's a timeless question, as you know, if you've ever been on Facebook or next door or anywhere online, uh, everyone's always asking, do you know a handyman? And you know, we answer that question with three value propositions that we apply some technology to. We provide a firm fixed upfront price uh, for our labor. Uh, we provide a lifetime transferable guarantee on all of our work. If we fix it, it stays fixed and we come back. And, and lastly, but not least, uh, you know, we trademarked uh, the saying, honey, do today, not tomorrow. We, we do things in a timely manner. We don't schedule you out for three weeks. Supply chain notwithstanding uh, for, for some special orders. It, it is a challenging time for for us and also all, you know, all my fellow entrepreneurs here. We're trying, since our la my last presentation, I presented during the height of the pandemic uh, back in 2020 uh, uh, here at One Million Cups. Uh, we've been working on putting together a maintenance agreement. You know, we wanna be proactive. Uh, right now as a company, we're, we're, we're pretty much for the most part our services and, and we perform you know, upwards of a thousand repairs a month. Uh, we are responsive. People have things that are broken. They need to be fixed, and, and we respond to that. But what we want to do is have a, a proactive approach, just like anyone would in health or other industries. Uh, we go out, and we want, to, uh, we want to provide a maintenance agreement, and we want to provide some basic off-the-shelf technology to do that, which is available to everybody. In fact, we're using it right now, Zoom. It's something we're all familiar with and how we do it, and 
what we want to do at, at Honeydew today is go out and provide uh, uh, Zoom consultations for people on demand for a wide range of home services. Uh, we want to be able to provide value. And so, you know, we offer our stakeholders, you know, some basic questions. Uh, what should the scope of our services be since many of our handymen work remote today? Uh, and, and what would you pay as a remote customer for an annual maintenance agreement? And, you know, we'd love, I'm, I'm putting it out there to you as my fellow uh, uh, skilled entrepreneurs. These are questions that we're wrestling with uh, here, here at Honeydew today. Because at the end of the day, answering the question, you know, do you know a handyman means we want to provide value. And if we provide value, pretty much everything in our company takes care of itself. Uh, a little about me before we proceed a little bit. I'm a family man. Uh, as you can see from the pictures, this is my, my family. I have, I have four children uh, that are, uh, the, the, the older two are turning into entrepreneurs of, the, of their own and the, the younger two are on the way. Uh, my wife, Alexandra, is the love of my life. She's here uh, in the pictures and on the call, probably listed as John Partridge uh, somewhere in there. Uh, and, and that's my extended family, my, my sisters. I have uh, uh, five sisters and too many nieces and nephews. I, I come from Long Island, but I've been down here for many years. And uh, I, I've been a lifelong entrepreneur. Uh, I've always been the guy with five paper roots uh, growing up and uh, continue to be. So I, I love the process and I love working with, with fellow people, uh, really like One Million Cups and, and other networking groups uh, here in Northern Virginia. I stay active in the mental health community. I'm part of a group called the Eric Monday Foundation. And the picture on the upper right is from Melee Till Midnight. It's a annual event that I, that I put on every year uh, with our board of directors uh, up at George Mason University. We just had it this past weekend. And we get thousands of people out for one of the biggest uh, wrestling tournaments in North America to take down the stigma surrounding mental health issues for athletes and veterans uh, that often inhibits them from seeking the mental health that they need. And it's an important cause to me, uh, just like entrepreneurship. And, you know, I, I use uh, wrestling as, as, a, as a metaphor for my business and life and how I go about things. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose but I'm tenacious and hardworking. And, you know, if I get, you know, punched in the nose and I like to think that that attitude is permeated into uh, honeydew today, we, we just keep going. Uh, who is it? Winston Churchill once said, you know, the definition of uh, uh, success is going from one disappointment to the other without losing optimism. And, uh, you know, th that's how we do it. Cause we all know entrepreneurship is hard. Um, you know, this is a nice picture of uh, one of our best handymen there, Benito. Uh, working on a, a door frame last uh, uh, last week, uh, you know, we here here's the problem we solve. We solve do you know a handyman? And we view the video consultations as a tool to do that. Uh, I know a lot of technologists come to one million cups, and we're all familiar with that. We don't view the technology as a uh, it, it, it's, it, we, we, we don't chase the technology. We, we apply things that are out there to make our services better. And uh, we believe that right now we're, we're reusing Zoom, where if somebody wants a consultation with us, we send them a Zoom link and we can have them walk around the house with their phone. Uh, there are different apps that we use to record uh, the Zoom and take notes and do things like that. Uh, we are working with a group uh, by the name of Karenga. Uh, they, were, they were formed out of Urgently, one of uh, Northern Virginia's big success stories, to soup up that Zoom call a little bit. But the idea is that any, anywhere, any place, anytime, if somebody needs advice on home services, we can be the matchmaker within our company and put somebody on a video call with them to turn off their water, to fix their running toilet, or what we're thinking is, you know, when you're out on your deck on a Sunday, and I'm specifically referring to my mother-in-law, who's sitting there looking at her deck, and she decides that she wants to go from Trex to this color to that color, perhaps she gets on with an interior designer or decorator and, and has some good consultation, or perhaps it's a DIY uh, father or dad who is, he wants to paint uh, the siding on his house, but he doesn't know what paints to mix and match and 
what, what paint would go on a siding. And at Honeydew today, we would be here immediately for that. Just like I think a lot of us have that for our computers. We have com computer troubleshooters and services and IT uh, that come in and remote into our computer. So the, the model is there. Uh, we just wanna use it for home services and be there first with the most uh, with that. But what I'm interested in hearing from the One Million Cups community and my fellow entrepreneurs is, does this have value? When I last presented it in 2020, we were looking at a maintenance agreement. Why? Quite frankly, a lot of it's because investors want to see maintenance agreements. They don't care about our sales. They want to see who's on the hook to be with us forever. And the fact is, we don't need that. And quite frankly, I don't know if we provide value by doing that. Because the fact is, if you call us now, we, come, we give you a price and we come repair. We don't need you on the hook. And it's not fair to you to have you paying, some, some, paying for something that we do anyway. This is something with the remote service that's an added value. Would it be, is that, are we providing any value in your estimation? Your, you know, each of you, we, we value uh, your opinions in what we're doing, you know, in trying to do this. And if so, what's it worth? And these are things, as always, that we're wrestling with. So I'll leave it there, one million cups. That's our challenge question. Is this a value? If so, what particular services would you be interested in? And what would it what would it cost? Thank you. Great job, John. Um, I'm Melinda over here, and I am facilitating the conversation today. So a couple of things quickly. Please raise your hand, as I see some of you are already doing, which is great, um, with the emoji if you can, or send me a text, because I've also got the screen for, for what you guys are looking at uh, in front of me. And that way I can manage who wants to say something and um, keep your questions or comments. And we're really looking for more comments and questions, but there may be questions before we can get to the answer brief. Um, and when you're done, when John is done speaking, um, please mute yourself again and we will call on the next person. The first person with their hand up is Heather. Morning, Hi, everybody. Hi. My name is Heather. I'm with Capital Practice Consulting, a marketing firm in this area. Uh, John, <clears throat> I, I hear you on like, you know, what is the value there when you can just call somebody out? I think one of the things that I reflect on as a busy business owner is like the aspect of not having to think about making a call, trying to schedule something online, getting a quote. The one thing though that I think could be helpful is maybe there's a service that you are providing in that regular visit that regardless of whether or not other things need to be done, that service is being performed. Um, you know, what I'm thinking of is like, and I know this is not your arena, but you know, like pest treatment, for example, they're always coming out and they're doing a pest treatment. Um, so maybe if there's something, and I'm trying to think from a maintenance perspective, if there's something that needs to be done on a quarterly basis, maybe it's changing like the HVAC filter or something like that, right? Where absolutely what will be done today is we're changing your HVAC filter, we're changing your water filter. I don't know if it's something like that and that's the maintenance part of it. But then in that visit, um, the person that's there maybe can catch some other things that essentially are like, okay, let me get you on the schedule to fix A, B, C, and D. You send a text message in advance, Heather, you know, just as a reminder, your um, person is coming out on June 1st and make sure you have your honey do list ready for us to look over to give you a quote on the spot and, and schedule you for that the next day or, you know, whenever. That, that's an excellent point. And, and th th thank you. Uh, that's I'll definitely consider that. Carolyn, you know, the, the, the big the big thing, I guess, is, you know, we we're all familiar with uh, joining gyms at the first of the year. What we, what we don't want to do is have anybody look back at any maintenance agreement and go, that was worthless. I shouldn't have joined the gym. You know, I, I went I went the first three weeks of January and, uh, you know, that was that. Uh, and, and I appreciate that business model. And I'm not saying that business model wouldn't work for us too uh, or have some results. But I really want to make sure it's it's something that people go, this is really good. You really want to have this this program in place at your house. Next, we have Carolyn, and then we have Barbara Williams-Lewis. 
Hi, John. Thank you so much for your presentation. It was really helpful. And as you were going through it, I was thinking, maybe I need to call him. I have a few things. But uh, my first and uh, foremost, I want to say that as far as the maintenance agreement is concerned for me, I would want the ability to have the ability to, as a customer with a maintenance agreement, to be able to jump to the top of the list in the event something came up. That would be of value to me so that when I called in as, hi, Dr. Mack, you're a value customer with a maintenance agreement. What's your challenge? I have this thing, but we have some, like have a, a same day type of thing for your maintenance customers. And that would be a real great value to me. And also just to piggyback on the last speaker that had a question is to say, hey, we're we're coming out to change the batteries in your smoke detectors and, and things like that. It's time. So you do the fall back and the spring forward have a main maintenance uh, schedule for your customers with a maintenance agreement to come out and do those things for them. And that that's, I think that would be very helpful. So that's it. I thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Next, we've got Barbara Williams Lewis, then we have Ken, and then we have John R. Yes, good morning. Um, Great presentation, John. Um, something that I definitely wouldn't think of in my world, but definitely I'd see it as a great value. Um, uh, uh, my question was that I put in the chat too, was that would it be a 24 hour service? Um, I think about, let's say you, you're waking up in the middle of the night and you got a water leak, um, you know, unexpectedly or dishwasher is not working properly, would there be a uh, 24 hour um, coverage for your service? I think like um, a lot of things with the, in the mental health space now, you can pretty much log on anytime with your laptop and find these different companies out here that um, online <clears throat> that's providing, you know, counseling or service for um, their, for clients. And as you know, you can, if you have a course emergency, it's a 911 number, but I was just curious if um, there would be in your maintenance agreement um, for 24 hour service for emergency type situations. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Barbara. Okay, next is Ken. Let me get my microphone on. Uh, John, um, let me make sure, cause I didn't hear previously your previous show. Um, I'm assuming you're the franchisor. We are, we are not a franchise. Uh, we are we are a standalone company, and part of that I'm I'm not I'm not saying I'm not opposed at some point to considering that. We haven't tried to uh, build out our systems and procedures like a franchise for our different uh, areas, but um, no, we're not a franchise. And part of that is I I want the focus in our company to be on making good repairs. And I, I do worry that if we become a franchise, I get up every morning thinking about how I can sell another franchise rather than so improving the, our service. The reason right that I, I was somewhat misled was your reference to big dreams. And yep. so I immediately thought, we want to be the handyman everywhere, right? Yep. I immediately That's thought right. of Howard Kurtz. You know, how did he get yep. Starbucks on every corner? And yep. um, you've got a competitor in that space in that Ace Hardware is rolling out uh, franchises um, for handyman services that are built on a model of trucks on the street. Yep. Um, and so um, that's, that's obviously not yet truly the vision for this business. And so I was led somewhat astray. Um, thanks for the clarification. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, we, we, we want to be America's handyman. We just have a, a, a different model that I think uh, can get it done. I mean, so far, I mean, we don't, we, we, we work with Ace Handyman. We work with, I can name off all of the, the players everywhere and in Northern Virginia. And quite frankly, we collaborate. The world's not going to run out of repairs and we all meet and talk together and, and figure out better ways to do it and help each other. Uh, including uh, Ace, we're very familiar with them. So I, so I still don't understand your business. Are you a we, centralized distributor of handyman opportunities? No, no, we are a handyman company. If you call us, we repair it. And other handyman companies, our number one referral partner are other contractors. 
because they don't have the manpower or whatever it may be to get the small repairs done. And, and different contractors have different economic models. For instance, a roofer has to have, say, for instance, $2,500 a day uh, from each crew where they can't have people roll for a few shingle repairs anywhere, quite frankly. Uh, doing doing a $150 repair on two shingles on a roof, it's a lot better to send Honeydew today than to have their crew drive, especially with these gas prices, across Northern Virginia for half a day. And, and I could go deeper into the economics, but mm -hmm. our, our number one source is other contractors who rely on us to provide manpower and assistance uh, for the little thorny tacky issues. We're not trying to compete with people that are doing kitchen remodels or roofers or house builders. We right. answer the question, do you know a handyman? And you know that's a, a question that's always been relegated to a guy in a truck or two guys in a truck. And to date, there's been no consistency. There's been no brand name American handyman company that goes from coast to coast. And I wouldn't have gotten in this business if there was. Next, we have John R., then we have Deb Cohen, and then we have Tess Rollins. Hey, John, always great to see you. And thank you so much for presenting today. It really means a lot to uh, One Million Cups. So the HVAC companies all over all offer a subscription model that they come twice a year. They look at your HVAC. You're familiar with it. And I remember that my mother had a whole house subscription where she was in a condo, so the roof wasn't an issue, but anything inside was covered. And building on some of the other ideas, whether it's changing the filters quarterly, doing the leaves in the gutters. But if you said to me, and I would say the price point has got to be I don't know, and I don't know if it makes sense or not, 50 bucks a month, $600 a year. You're not going to guarantee that you're going to fix everything, but you're going to come in and make sure all the systems are working, heating, electrical, whatever. So if all of a sudden an outlet goes, maybe it's covered. Um, but somewhere under a grand a year, and certainly in the senior market, where... I'm sick and tired of fixing things and replacing appliances. I've, you know, you own a house for 40 some odd years. You know how many uh, dishwashers, refrigerators, and all those ice makers I've bought? So certain basic services would be covered and real repairs would have to be extra. But where you were in my house three times a year, perhaps, checking on systems, I would find that valuable. That's that's uh, I pre that's very good insight, John. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's Thank the kind you. of info that's the kind of information that we we want to hear. What what people are thinking, and you know, sometimes there's no rhyme or reason. It just feels right, or it seems attractive. And and uh, I mean, you know, uh, pricing and consumer psychology is a is a black art, and uh, you know, we wrestle with that. No, I hear you. Next person, you can test it. I'm sorry, you can test it though. You yep. can try a price and see how you go. And maybe it's with a group of customers who you go to and say, hey, I'm going to deliver this service to you for free for the next six months as part of a pilot. And get them at different times to tell you what they would pay. Yep. Next, we have Deb Cohen, Tess Rollins, Diane Jackson, and Reggie Holmes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, John, for um, your good thoughts here. Um, uh, sort of piggybacking a little bit on what John uh, Rutenberg just said, you know, I live in a condo, um, so I don't have as much need as someone who might be in a single family home. I can't see myself doing a Zoom for a do it yourself kind of project because I don't want to do it myself. Um, so, you know, I think that's one of the things that you have to balance. I, you know, I have a handyman that I use here in my building. I use him because he's very convenient, but he's also very expensive. And I would love to have a service. I think it would be great if I knew that I could have a service where 
you know, if my sink is stopped up, I can call and, you know, get that. Um, there's probably, I'm probably more limited on what I might want to spend for that service compared to somebody who's in a house. So one of the things you may want to think about is, um, is there a fee that people could pay just to be able to have access to you? And then they pay a fee for whatever the repair is. Because I don't want to pay, you know, $100 a month um, and you come and you fix something for free um, because I may not use it the entire year. So that's $1,200 sort of down the drain. But if I paid a small fee, I don't know what that is, uh, to have access to you and your service, to know that if I have a, a, a clogged up sink, I can then, you know, get to you. So if you're talking about service agreements, um, which I believe that's what you are talking about, you may want to think about, are there different kinds of service agreements that you might want to, to use? Um, and how might you employ those? You know, what's the range of possibilities, whether it's a condo or a single family home, or if it's somebody who wants to do do it yourself or somebody who doesn't? Thank you, Deb. Those, those are excellent points. Um, uh, you know, the, the issue becomes, uh, quite frankly, if somebody needs something, we are available. And right. what, the reason why we're, we're looking at the video, re, you know, the video consultations is that would be a, a service above that that's a little bit different. And perhaps that is a, a significant value that people would want to pay for. But I don't want to pretend that if, if, you know, Tess has an agreement and you do not, you, you both get access. I mean, right. everybody gets right. everybody gets access. And, and I guess I don't want to be disingenuous and, and sell somebody something that's of no added value that would have had access sure. anyway. Sure. You know, and, that, and that's the, you know, the concern. Sure. So one, and I don't know that I was clear on this point, but like one of the issues I have as an example is I have some light bulbs, um, both in my kitchen and my bathroom that aren't working correctly. Um, I don't know if it's an electrical issue. I don't know if it's a socket issue, but you know what? I live in a high rise condo and to, you know, have to sort of stay here for four hours and then deal with where do you park? How do you get up here? It's a little bit of a hassle. So I don't, I, I haven't dealt with it in months. I really want to get those things fixed. But if I could have a streamlined way where I knew um, I had somebody that I could count on and they, you know, could count on me for sort of, I, I would have those things fixed. Um, you know, and actually, as we're talking, I'm making a long list. So I might give, give you a call because I have a whole bunch of things that need to be done. Um, you know, but it's just, it's more of a hassle to sort of get that initial you know, time block and fix these things that might not, you might not want to come out just to fix some yeah. light bulbs. Well, let, let me ask you, would there be a, perhaps it's just, I mean, I'm not going to discount a psychological feeling that if we charged you $5 a month that you felt you had us and had access to us and that, that made you feel more comfortable. Um, you know, the, the, the issue becomes where we are available. Right. Uh, sure. You know, and even if you don't pay for Sure. That's so right. just a quick reminder, we have about five people in line for, for questions. John, you've got a hot topic here. So Thanks, just make sure you keep your answers and questions concise. Sure. That and was what I was about to say. It's really important to, when you're done with your question, keep it short so John can answer it and keep your comments as concise as possible. It's really important that you let other people have their turn. And as Jen just said, we have five people waiting. Um, John Norris, I've got you, and you're, you'll be after Reggie, and we have more people waiting as well. Go ahead, Des. Morning, John. It's been a while. Good to see you. Good to see um, you. <laughs> we know each other through wrestling. So, um, John, the idea that I have as far as um, the uh, maybe some kind of maintenance agreement, I think an, introduct an introductory, like, here are the things that we'll do and if you can introduce that to like we um others have mentioned different levels maybe something for seniors but on the other end you know jason he's in college he's in college the parents will pay for a service like a maintenance service that has bolted items when they're moving their child out of the house <laughs> into yeah. their first apartment i think that that's a great that would be a great way for you to introduce that some kind of maintenance service is to have those bolted items because parents will pay you know if it's a thousand bucks just to make sure that they don't have to do everything in that first apartment or that first house first time homeowners um will also look for that 
Also, real estate agents, as you know, um, will give a closing gift. So if there's something there where you could have a price point for a, a, an agent to have a, um, a package or, or an introductory maintenance, that's a good way for, to get a homeowner or a, an, a, a renter that has a checklist of things they don't know. What, I mean, you know, our young kids, when they leave the house, they have no idea what they need to check for or look for. So I think that that would be a value is to have some kind of, you know, very specific package to introduce you into, you know, a maintenance package, you know, long term. I, I think that, that those are excellent points and, and definitely things we should pursue. Okay, next we have Diane Jackson, and then Reggie Holmes, John Norse, and Ken Portnoy. Thank you, Melinda. Please also, uh, Tom Scheib, he's been waiting to ask his question as well. Oh, I'm Thanks. sorry, I thought he had gone. Um, okay. Tom, you're up first, and then everybody else. Thank you. So quit kicking me off, will you? Come on. <laughs> uh, you and I have known each other for a while. We have a mutual friend that's pretty successful with this um, maintenance contract thing. Simply, um, I would recommend you testing it, maybe put three levels together. Uh, Rutenberg had a great idea with, by testing it. And um, I know you're there, so just go ahead and do it. How about that? Thank you, Tom. Okay. Um... Now looking at, okay, we've got Diane, Reggie, John, and Ken. Thank you, Melinda. And, and John, I love this idea. Um, so many ways that you can spin it off, as you well um, understand, of hearing everybody. Um, from the perspective of a maintenance, I, you know, I think of like an HVAC, and I know John really kind of picked up what I was typing in the, the chat box at the time, but the idea of, of um, getting someone twice a year that you know, fall and winter, I love the idea of like you know changing the batteries, which sounds really simple, but people don't do it. But along with that, you could piggyback to make it a simple contract where you'd shut off the hose bib and turn it back on in the spring. Now, if there's a problem, obviously that that's a, you know a line item that's more so for service. But those are things that are are like an HVAC contract where if that goes wrong, in particular the hose bib, there's a big issue. And people, you know, that, that's something people don't really check, but they should. So, and that's a simple, a quicker opportunity for your men to come in, come out of the home. And I don't mean to say only men, you may have women um, in there, but it is, it's, it's something of value. And lastly, what I really think about with something like this twice a year is we all know as business owners, we do business with people we know, like, and trust. And if we don't see you twice a year, we're not going to go out and refer you and sing your praises. So that's the value, I think, in trying to do something in a contract that allows you to come out. So that's just my thought, not really a question, but just wanted to throw that into the mix. That's an excellent point, Diane. I, I hadn't really thought about it in that lens. So thank you. Next, we have Reggie and John and Ken. Hey, John, uh, great job. Um, a couple of ideas that I had. Um, we initially started talking about the idea. Um, I thought you were talking about uh, like a, a video library that people could pay and have access to uh, for those people that like to do stuff themselves. Uh, so it's essentially your people walking through, walking people through how to solve, you know, various house challenges uh, on their own. Because for some people, you know, the thrill of the do-it-yourself is sort of what they are looking for, and for someone like me, for example, with a new baby, it's just not convenient to really have a lot of people in the home. So if I could maybe watch a series of videos uh, that I have access to through this plan or an extension of this plan, um, that would allow me to get the knowledge that I need to try to take care of it myself. So that's an, that's an idea that kind of go, goes along with the, with the maintenance plan. Um, one other thing is uh, maybe there's a, a, a model where people buy credits um, and uh, as opposed to, you know, just paying a fee for something that they might not actually use, uh, they kind of buy the credits as they need it, and you break down how it covers, you know, specific 
things that are needed. If I need more for a bigger project, I just buy more credits. Um, but I'm, I'm locked in there as a member. I'm paying something at least uh, to have it. And then if you do that, um, using the technology to create like a dashboard where I can log in and see uh, what preventative things might be needed in six months or 12 months, and just kind of always keep tabs of what I need, um, as well as being able to add things on my own and have you recommend things that I might need that I might not be thinking about. So just a couple of ideas. Those are some great ideas, Reggie. Um, you know, I, I, I am, I, I want to provide, we, we want to provide the, the DIY service. I am somewhat a little, I mean, most of the people that do call us, call us because they don't want to do it themselves. Um, uh, you know, the, the typical thing in this area is, we're, you know, they're too busy. People have very demanding jobs and, you know, everyone in the house is working. And so I, I do wonder sometimes what the market would be, but in terms of maybe branding and establishing ourselves as a, a leader in the, you know, the knowledge of how to repair, I'm, I'm very interested in putting out some videos and that type of thing. And then, and then just helping people when we can. Uh, people need advice, give them advice. Okay, next is John Nance. Ken, I'm gonna come back to you and have Jen talk and then come back to you because you you had uh, spoken before just to give more people a chance, but you'll be after Jen. Hey, John, um, I know nothing about, in a sense, your business operations, obviously economics, but I'm gonna relate insurance to what you do. And that is if someone pays a monthly fee and they get access to you unlimited without a cost, my fear would be the boy who cried wolf and that you're making a service call for a nail punch, you know, uh, an outlet not working, and they're constantly calling you and abusing your free service. In the insurance world, that's like having a zero deductible. I could call a hundred times and it doesn't cost me anything. So my fear would be if you went to some form of unlimited plan that you may end up being making house calls that aren't in a sense revenue generating and just repeating yourself because it's kind of a free service. Even Medicare, which is what I do, has a small deductible to disincentivize people from just calling constantly for health care. So just, again, just an insight that I would share. I, I think you hit the nail on the head with that, John. Um, we are mindful of that. And, and that's where, you know, what things can we provide virtually that are of value? If we have to go to the house, we provide a price for that, but is there a value of reaching an expert technician on a question of some kind? And it could be anything from what paint goes with this or what are we going to do here? Uh, it also has a value I didn't mention before, just a diagnostic for our, for our estimates. You know, you can imagine we do small repairs. We, we don't need to go out. We can't go out and look at everybody's and give an on-site estimate. Uh, we have to move very quickly. A lot of times we can do that with pictures, but the video consultation achieves a number of other nice things. I think Diane said, you know, the no like, and trust factor. We start working together, but it also gives a more in-depth ability to give an estimate of what actually is going on and a better uh, roadmap for the technician that's going on site. You know, they'd get a Zoom call with a transcript of exactly what's going on before they ever hit the house. But yes, we are mindful that you know, no, we, we don't want to be get trapped into a situation where we're going out for nail pops. We, we'll go out for the nail pop, but price it accordingly uh, when it's done. But the question becomes, you know, what value can we provide? And is it a value to be able to jump on a call with somebody who can look over whatever your situation is and provide so, some expert guidance? And is that a value and what price? Perfect. Jen, you're next and then Ken. So John, I think of when I do call a handyman or someone and they come out and the answer was so simple, but I just didn't know it. And so the virtual call for that type of a message makes perfect sense. I think if you're doing maintenance where you come out, maybe you give a menu to people to choose. You know, if you want to do quarterly, uh, what are the four things you might want to choose? I love doing the fire alarm safety check. Maybe one is hang Christmas lights or, or decorations. Um, maybe one is switch out whatever you need based on the season. So I think giving people ideas and making it very easy to just drag and drop and choose what they want in a maintenance contract could be very helpful. 
those, those are good points. You know, it's, it's about trying to provide, you know, something we all try and do in all of our respective industries, trying to apply some type of structure to complex industries with lots of moving parts in a way that is fair for everybody. And, and make sense and adds value. And, and I think you're, you're, you're hitting on some, some very, everyone is, some, some very good things that we need to kind of incorporate into a, a, a framework uh, with us. Thank you. Next, we've got Ken. Hey, I, I didn't introduce myself properly when I spoke before. I'm the profit guy. I'm all about profitability. I'm all about profitability going into the business owner's pocket. That's what I do for a living. And so I'm curious about where your profitability is now. Is your profit, is your highest margin service delivering a guy to a premise to do work? And if that's where your margin is, then everything else ought to support doing more of that most effectively. And I think your implementation of modern technology to speed that process through video communications is a great way to modernize your business. Technology can be very seductive. And so I wanna say, stick to the trades, stick to, to things that you know, stick to things that are working and stay away from the uh, technical services delivery because although that may be attractive, that's, um, too far outside your sphere of expertise, and it drops you into a whole new competitive environment, a whole new technical environment. But uh, to evaluate on the basis of profitability, what I, you've got to sell a whole lot of consultation subscriptions in order to make, a, you may, when you figure it out, you may need to sell a gazillion low cost consultation subscriptions in order to match the profitability of dispatching one guy to a house. I think that's very good, good point. I mean, every entrepreneur, us particularly needs, we need to stay in our lane and stay focused. And it's very easy to, you know, get outside the buoys sometimes as you, as you're going to a, to a destination. And, and, you know, our only avenue of profitability is to go out and repair things. And we take satisfaction in that because it's well-earned money. You call us, you, you know the price and we fix something. The question becomes, how can we do it better? And we think that having a video consultation will help with that. And we do sense that there is a need for people that just want that instant gratification on a Saturday afternoon of what's going on here. What, why is there water coming through this area of my house? My, what's going, you know, what's happening? And, and, it wouldn't be much for us to have as part of our on-demand service you know, the ability to have a bank of people, and really we can have it across the country and source experts. We already have uh, in in different areas that can respond to people's questions. <clears throat> so, responding to a little bit of what Jen said and adding an idea, and then I'll call on John, and then we'll go back to Jen for the last question. Jen's thought of the different maintenance contracts and all that is excellent. One of the ways you might get there is again with Ken bringing up the trades. You could ask some of your regular contractors that you work with, what are things that within your area of expertise are things that people should check every year and how often? And if you could start compiling a list based on what your trades tell you, that's going to bring them business. So that's the benefit for them to give you the right response that, hey, so-and-so needs to change out all their uh, smoke alarms or whatever it might be. Um, that might give you a real organic way to get to the different types of contracts. John, R, quickly, and then Jen. Final Absolutely. My, my last thought is, gosh, maybe you offer the video conference capability with the maintenance contract, the whole house maintenance contract, because I don't know anybody out there in the contractor's world who's offering to hop on a Zoom meeting to discuss, and maybe it's your next plan visit where you have a schedule of items and then Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner say, also, John, there's this weird noise in the left corner of the house while you're here. I want you to check that out. And by 
having that preliminary Zoom call in preparation for your next scheduled site visit is a big differentiator. And while it doesn't necessarily address the DIY do-it-yourself person who wants to paint his deck, that might be another service you provide, um, but it would be a great way to interact with your customers and probably generate some additional tasks while you're out for the scheduled assignment. That's a, that's a, a, a good point, John. Thank you. Always. Okay, the final question of the day, Jen. So John, clearly you have hit a hot topic. You're gonna have lots of people calling you to have their honey-do list done. Um, what else can we as the One Million Cups community do for you? You know, keep, keep doing what you're doing. I mean, I, I called Northern Virginia home. I was born in Arlington. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not to get too, uh, you know, sanctimonious about it, but I, but I think the entrepreneurs lead the way uh, in, in, in our community. I mean, we, we create the jobs, we do the innovation, uh, we provide the manpower you know, we, we get it done. We help each other. And, and uh, you know, it, it's my favorite community. And, and you know, one million cops is, is at the top of that sphere. And um, I'm, I'm just grateful for you. Just let's just keep doing what we're doing. I, it seems like we're going to go through some challenging times over the next 12 months. And I'd encourage everybody on this call to dig down and get on this call every Wednesday and support each other and help people solve problems and keep their focus in their businesses where it needs to be. Uh, and just keep going. Thank you. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. And thanks for bringing so many people this morning. We love seeing all of the faces. We definitely hope you join us next week as well. Uh, Melinda or Leslie, back over to you. Uh, Leslie, back to you. Before we do that, if you're not John and you've got John's name in front of you, if you can make sure you put your information into the chat, we, we can count you as a guest and we can also if you don't want to be on the mailing list, let us know, but we can add you to our weekly email. Go ahead, Leslie. Okay, um, thank you, John. Um, so if you're interested in becoming an organizer, um, what that entails is uh, to just engage with us a little bit more deeply. Um, you would join our weekly half hour organizer meetings on Monday mornings, and uh, it would just add to your marketing, coaching, speaking, and facilitator skills. Um, there's just a very small time commitment with a large um, return on investment. Uh, you would meet with the presenters, help them to get their slide decks prepared and prepared to speak on our Wednesday calls. And... Uh, we highlight you on each of our organizer slides every week. So it's great exposure for your business and who, what you're doing. And um, we, one, we as One Million Cups um, encourage organizer teams to develop their new leaders. So we will help you in any way possible. And we hope that you think about joining our team. There are a few upcoming events. Um, for the Central Fairfax Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm not gonna read all of them, but uh, screenshot this and their events are always awesome. Um, the one that we need to highlight is um, in two weeks on a Tuesday and Fairfax County Economic uh, Partnership is having a session, it's free and we highly recommend it. I We'll put the link in the chat after the meeting since I can't do it now. You guys would see me doing that. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Melinda. All right. So next week we have C-Score uh, presenting. So that will be super exciting. Um, I... Yeah, that's fine. And then it looks like July is almost full, full up, but we do still have an open spot for the 27th. So if anybody on the call today or, um, oh, yeah, July, 
um, or if you know of anybody that would be interested in presenting, we do have an open spot. Um, it looks like July is also in the next column, but I'm going to assume that it should have been August. Month. I didn't yes. change it. I'm sorry. No worries. No, no, wor no worries. My sick brain just kind of skipped the beat there for a second. Well, that's fine. Up. Um, but it looks like August is open. So we are looking for four presenters for August. If you know of anybody, please um, have them come down, down at the bottom of your screen, the www.1millioncups.com slash Fairfax. They could put an application in. It's a really simple process to apply and to become a, a speaker and um, somebody either an organizer or an ambassador will reach out and help you prepare your slide deck it's a super simple process sorry my toddler's asking for an orange um, but we hope to have you join us Thanks for joining us. Wasn't yeah. Go ahead. Jen, why don't you take the last two slides? Hello, thank you everybody for joining today. Fantastic conversation. We really appreciated it. Uh, thank you, John, for presenting and bringing such a fun question to the group. If you are interested in applying or know a business owner who'd benefit, they can go to 1milliancups.com forward slash Fairfax and present to get in front of this group. So again, we'd love to have you. As I mentioned at the very beginning of the start of the conversation, there's actually over 160 chapters all across the country. So you can present here. You can also present in other markets as well if you're interested in launching your business in different regions or even nationally. So thank you again to everybody for joining. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording at this point, but it's been fantastic seeing.